Hello, my name is Bo Hannum and uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I found a workaround to get uh, autofocus in video on a Canon 5D Mark II. Two. That's from 2009. Uh, one of the biggest problems that I've faced as a uh, somebody who doesn't own a, a modern camera is when I do my sound samples or my talking head videos and stuff, I've got to uh, sit a certain distance away and I getting autofocus when there isn't autofocus is a huge problem, obviously. Uh, so I had to put a teddy bear uh, on a stool and then focus it and then take the teddy bear away, do my sound sample or talking head video and hope everything was in, in focus. Not a good way to work. Uh, but I did find a way to do it with a Canon 5D Mark II and I, as I know that these cameras, although they're old, like 12 years old, uh, 13 years old, they, they're still a lot of them around and people still use them. They're an excellent camera. This is fantastic stills camera and the video is still really good, but it uh, just doesn't have autofocus until now. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So in order to get autofocus in video on the 5D Mark II, what you're going to need is a tethering cable because we're going to have to tether this the, com the camera to the computer. This one's six foot and that has served me well but uh, the length of the cable just will depend on how far you want to be away from the computer. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a wireless mouse uh, because if, you're, if the camera's here and the computer's over there and you're kind of sitting somewhere else uh, you're going to need to just have the camera on your lap or on a little table uh, so you can uh, click and you'll see what I mean later. Just to open up this AV out HDMI panel and plug in your tethering cable into the AV out port. Put the other end, the USB, into the computer. Then turn the camera on. Right, so if the camera's on manual, press menu, scroll over to the wrench, second wrench, go down to live view, movie function, then just make sure you're setting the uh, camera to whatever you want, 24 or 30 frames per second in 1920 by 1080. Get out of that. Then up here, uh, change the f-stop to whatever you want make sure that the shutter speed is corresponding to the frames per second so I'm on 30 frames per second so it's on 60. Uh, I'm shooting kind of after hours at 90 so I've got ISO on auto but it's at uh, about 6000. And then camera and you're ready to go. So open up EOS Utility 2 and click on camera settings, remote shooting. And then view, uh, live view shoot. And there we are. So if I wanted to focus on somewhere, you just double click it and this pops up, double click again And the camera goes about its way. And close. And now it's focused to there. And if I wanted to do my face, which who wouldn't? So let's get some ear action happening. Yes. Uh, so then it focuses and then you can just press record. So the only main caveat about this process is if you, when you focus say on your face, you have to remain pretty much still. Uh, if you move forward or backwards, then you're going to be out of focus. And so 
just don't change your sitting position. And if you move, you simply click on the computer screen to where you want to focus again. Uh, a way to minimize this is to not use a small f-stop. So with a f-stop of say 1.8, your, your uh, focus plane, so to speak, is really thin. It's like you know, a quarter of an inch. If you focus on the tip of the nose, the eyes are going to be not in focus. Uh, and so, you know, if you're doing a talking head and you're moving back and forth, you're going to be out of focus for all of it. Uh, the way around it is to use a large f-stop. You will lose your blurry background, but you will gain a, so to speak, a thicker plane of focus. So with a 1.8 f-stop, your thickness of your field of focus is like tiny, quarter of an inch. And with, uh, say, f8 or something, a larger f-stop, uh, you've got this much, you know, six inches that you can play with moving back and forth and stuff. That will depend and change on your lens, and uh, but you just have to experiment and find out what's best. Uh, when you do use a larger f-stop, you lose that blurry background and you have to add more light so for this shot I'm at 1.8 on ISO 400 and when I kick it to f8 I have to use about ISO 6000 so it's a big difference there loss of quality so you're better off getting sort of external lights so the third way that you can manipulate light is with the shutter speed but when you're shooting video that's usually fixed at double whatever you're shooting your frames per second in. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, your uh, shutter speeds double that at 50. And if you're shooting at 30 like I am, then it's 60. So in short, to help stay in focus, if you're moving back and forth a little bit, just use a larger f-stop number. Uh, you will lose the nice blurry background that you may want but it's more important to get correct exposure and good focus on your face or whatever your subject is, rather than have the aesthetic quality of a blurry background. So I hope that was informative and you learned something new. I certainly was excited when I found a workaround for this on an old camera. If you found it informative, please like and subscribe and all that, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.